This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. In it. We welcome you this day as we gather in, in the last days of the church's year. And in that time, our thoughts turn to the return of our Lord and Savior, as they ought always be, of course. But turn to Christ and his return and looking forward to the great glory that he's prepared for those who love him. The order of service that will follow today is found on page 184 in your hymnals, and we begin with hymn 663. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and he forgave the iniquity of my sin. 
O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment, but I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield, the Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. To God on high, and on earth is will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee. We glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, have we
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, send forth your Son to lead home his bride, the Church, that with all the company of the redeemed we may finally enter into his eternal wedding feast. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. You may be seated. The Old Testament lesson appointed for the 24th Sunday after Pentecost is from the fifth chapter of Amos. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you have the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light. As if a man fled from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand against the wall, and a serpent bit him. Is not the day of the Lord darkness and not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your feasts, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fattened animals, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your songs. To the melody of your harps, I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters, and the righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> The epistle lesson is from the fourth chapter of 1 Thessalonians. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak together our learn by heart portions that's found printed inside the back cover of your bulletin for this day. Give us this day our daily bread. What does this mean? God certainly gives daily bread to everyone without our prayers, even to all evil people. But we pray in this petition that God would lead us to realize this and to receive our daily bread with thanksgiving. In our Sunday school memory verse for today, but the Lord is the true God. Jeremiah 10, 10. Please rise. Hallelujah. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in one Lord, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. <clears throat> According to the Scriptures, and descended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text from Matthew 25. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. Excuse me. This is our text. I would be a really bad doomsday prepper. I mean, I always have the best of intentions to get ready a, an emergency kit for the home. You may have one with, with flashlights and batteries, maybe some blankets that are included in it or a dry pair of clothes or, or some snacks perhaps. Just the kind of things that you might need if, if the siren goes on off in town in the middle of the night or the, the fire alarm sounds and you have to go down into the basement or crawl space. I often think we should even practice some drills, you know, like what we do if, and where we'd go if a fire alarm went off in the house or we heard the sirens blaring, but that hasn't happened. Then I noticed that parts of my emergency kit have, have migrated to other parts of the house where they've been used for, for different chores at different times. Flashlights no longer by the storm shelter, but scattered in different places. I mean, I know it's important, but the, the knowledge of a potential, a potential need, can't overcome the feeling that I'd be wasting my time at that moment, that it's not that important at the time. Jesus, the bridegroom, is coming at a day or an hour we do not expect. Will you be ready when he returns? Will your family be ready when he comes? And what have you done to, to make sure your family is ready? What are you doing to make certain you yourself are ready. In scripture, God's preparing a wedding feast for his son, our Lord Christ, when the bridegroom will receive his bride, the church. The church in heaven, that is the, the bride of Christ, will be all of those, but only those who believe in Jesus as their savior and have been baptized into Christ, into his little family of faith. Now here on earth, it's a little different than that. This side of heaven, the church is composed of the wheat and the tares. There are wise and there are, are foolish virgins waiting for the coming of Jesus. There are believers who, who bring lamps, but also oil as they wait for the bridegroom. But there are also hypocrites who, who keep the lamps, but are unprepared when the lamps burn out. And these are the ones who on the last day will hear God's rebuke. I don't know you. The thing about, about foolish people is that their foolishness consists primarily in being unconcerned about being foolish. I mean, if the foolish virgins were concerned to be ready, they would have made sure that they had oil for their lamps. For whatever reason, they thought it was was under control. They didn't need to be filled, or so they thought. And since no one can believe for someone else, they couldn't borrow from others what they didn't have for themselves, faith. Now recognize Jesus is, is talking about the visible church of Christ where there are believers who are saved by grace and unbelievers both the wise and the foolish virgins claim to be waiting, but something is tragically lacking among the foolish virgins. And for it, for it they are damned. This is a, a stern warning for you and me not to derive some false comfort from, from the fact that a name is on a church's roster somewhere. The foolish are fools precisely because they assume that they're fine. They don't need anything more 
than what they've brought along with them. As heirs of the Reformation and, and believers in the infallible word of God, we rejoice to know that our salvation is by God's grace through faith for Jesus' sake alone. Salvation is God's free gift to us in Jesus. And yet it's also true that a, a living faith is never alone. A spirit-given faith produces fruit. The fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. A spirit-given faith is a faith that lives from God's word, that hungers and thirsts after righteousness. To say we are saved by faith alone is simply to say that we live through trusting in our Lord Christ. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory. Yet it is also true till the end of time that faith works through love, Galatians 5 says. Or as James has it, faith without works is dead. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. If your lamp is empty, you can't cast a light into this world. A living faith is, is a faith that is given by God the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 1 says the Holy Spirit anoints us and sets his seal of ownership on us as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. When we are fed by the Holy Spirit through hearing God's word and, and fed at his altar through Jesus' body and blood, God is filling you. When we're together in the study of God's word and, and reading Holy Scripture, God's Holy Spirit is filling your lamp. And that lamp will cast the bright light of God's love in this world. As God uses you in, in your family, in this church, in, this, in your school, in this community, to shine the light of God's love. <clears throat> Notice the bridegroom, it says, delays his coming. I mean, we might wonder, what is keeping our Lord Jesus so long? Why doesn't he come already? 2 Peter 3 explains the re this reality in chapter 3. In the last days, scoffers will say, where is the promise coming? But the Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some understand slowness. But he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance. God wants more to be saved. That's why our Lord Christ hasn't come. When he comes, it will be visible. Every eye will see him. But he wants the church to speak law and gospel to proclaim repentance and the forgiveness of sins so that the Holy Spirit can, can fill the lamps of faith, believing in Jesus, the Savior. He wants to use you to share your hope in Jesus so that others can share in the feast. Only don't let your lamp go empty. Two important things can be said. Firstly, don't waste today. If these words should fall for whatever reason into your ears today, don't be a fool who doesn't feel the need to study the word, to be filled, doesn't pray, doesn't care about divine things, because in your mind you've already awarded yourself heaven. Understand that if you have air in your lungs today, that today is the day that God wants you to repent of all sins and trust in Jesus, your Savior, and look to him as the all-atoning redeemer from sin. Psalm, Psalm 95 says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Don't think you can always go and buy oil, that you can, can always 
begin to care about God and his free gift of grace. Because you don't know you'll have tomorrow. When the bridegroom comes, don't be caught outside knocking. Today is the day to be watchful, prayerfully waiting for our Lord Christ. The second observation is, is this. Entering this feast isn't a matter of trusting in your, your commitment to Jesus, like kind of like having faith in how strong your faith is. It's not about your strength even a little bit. It's about God's gift to you in Christ. The Heavenly Father is the one that's prepared the wedding feast after all. He's the one who, who betrothed you to Christ the Savior. He poured his Holy Spirit into your hearts in holy baptism and claimed you as the bride of Christ. Ephesians 5 says, God says Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. Christ did that. So if you must brag, boast in the Lord. This is how deeply the bridegroom loves you, his bride. He gave his life for you to live with him forever. And since that's God's great love, that, that the great God that you have, since that is the God that you have, who fills undeserving vessels such as, as you and I are, then, dear God, let us be useful. Today is the day. May we learn every day to trust in Jesus with all of our hearts and then every waking moment labor for God's kingdom to give of our time, our money, our strength to serve our Lord Christ, to actually do something useful in this world for God's kingdom. Don't mask or hide a, a foolish, empty heart You've been saved by God's grace to this end that you reflect the light of God's love. So see your home and your neighbor and your school and your church and, and your office workplace. All these are places where God wants to brightly shine through you as you serve God in good works that he's prepared in advance for you to do. Even as you, <clears throat> excuse me, let your trust always lay hold of Christ and his promises. It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that the alarm will never sound in the middle of the night. I know all about that. To think it's not important that you have batteries for your flashlight or in our text, oil for your lamps. It's easy to think that every tomorrow is going to be the same as today. But there's only one thing that you can know will never, truly never change, and it's God's love for you in Christ. His Holy Spirit is the oil that keeps that lamp of faith burning. His word is a lamp to your feet and a light for your path. So as we wait patiently, we know our our days or the days of this dark world, whichever pass sooner, we know they draw swiftly to a close. Let your faith rest in the words of Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter, <clears throat> he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress my God in whom I trust. He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up lest you strike your foot against a stone. This spirit-given trust is the oil that will allow you to meet him well when he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. We rise.
And now may the peace of God, which surpasses human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. seated as the offerings are received. remembering our prayers this day our brothers and sisters who are sick or hurting who are undergoing treatments or tests or recovering from any illness especially for for Joyce and Anita for Bob and Deb for Natalie for Judy and Eva Jean for Justin for Tom and Irene for Jenny and her sister for Dan and Jana Lee and Guy Terry, Mitchell, and Dean, and Ethan, and we also remember our Brittany's friend, Frank, and also Randy, as he's under the weather this day for healing and strength for him, and we rise. <laughs> Gracious Lord, you are our help and deliverer. We bring to you the prayers and petitions of your people that you may grant us all that we need and guard us against all things harmful. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, preserve your people from trusting in our good works and acts of righteousness and from trusting in the lies of the evil one. Help us to be awakened to your truth, the only truth, and be drawn to repentance and to put our hope again in Christ the Savior. Grant that what we do in worship and prayer may proclaim salvation in Jesus alone. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you bestow favor and honor and withhold nothing from those who walk uprightly. Bless parents and those who teach children your ways, that generations to come would love your promises. Walk in your truth and dwell in your house. Keep Jennifer and Jessica and gladden the homes of all who receive your gift of life. Lord, in your mercy. Righteous God, you desire, you despise corruption and 
and you command justice. Embolden our rulers and all in authority to enact and defend measures that preserve peace and provide justice for all. Put an end to violence and terror and war that your saving gospel may be preached to the glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, show mercy to those who cry aloud as they await your son's coming in glory. For our brothers and sisters who are sick or hurting, that you would strengthen and preserve them. Answer them with strength and healing, comfort and hope, and make them confident in Christ, who will raise his people on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, your Son will descend from heaven with a cry of command. Raise those who have fallen asleep and deliver us to your kingdom of glory. Until that day, strengthen us by his body and blood and prepare us for his coming in glory. Grant that we may not grieve as those who have no hope, but rejoice and encourage each other in the promise of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Father, for our nation, we give you thanks and praise. We ask that you would preserve and strengthen her. For those who have served her, we remember on this Veterans Day weekend. For those who have served and sacrificed, we give you thanks and pray that you would would strengthen them in their labors, especially those who continue to serve us in dangerous places around the world. And we remember especially Caleb, that you would surround them with your holy angels and keep them until they're restored to their, to their dear family members and loved ones, and that you would, would be their comfort also and their strength and courage as they await that restoration. God of our salvation, we know that neither day nor hour, we know neither the day nor hour of Christ's return, but we know that he's died and risen to open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Until that day, preserve us in faith and guard us from temptation. Don't let us be caught unprepared for his coming. Help us live out our days in loving service and joyful expectation of the life of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, We laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
and death for your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, given for your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. The true body of Christ for your sins. is the true body of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given for your sins.
We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Be seated. announcements before we go today 
Building committee, do you have anything you would like to? Okay. Well, I know you've got a, a pizza night to, on on the twentieth coming up, so clear your schedules and and your appetites to, for that day. So on the twentieth, um, elders, do we have? Okay. All right. All right. Well, you see in the bulletin uh, the, the share a thon for uh, this weekend for the Galesburg Rescue Mission. It's new move to the, the Nielsen School. So, there are, are those flyers for it, Leah? Yeah. So, if you'd like to pick some of those up and, and be a part of that, you can call in and, and make your donations. I'm certain they would take those with just a phone call anytime during the week, too. But uh, I know that that's very greatly appreciated by, by the rescue mission. Our partnership with them and in, in serving people who are kind of in, in bad places and need a, a big hand up. So God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day.